Hello there. It's a beautiful edition of Talk to Solomon on your favorite YouTube channel, Eniwaba, A-N-I-W-A-B-A. -A -A. Right, today we are talking to one radio and TV personality. His name, he will mention. Let's go straight up. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you get notified of our future uploads. Let's go straight up into the discussion. Salom, welcome to Talk to Solomon. Thank you very much, my brother. It's a pleasure having you here. Sure. You are a big man. You are a big <laughs> man too. <laughs> so the full name is Selom Amenya. Selom Amenya, yes. Mm, which part of Vota are you from? I come oh, from... Oti? No, I'm not Oti. Okay. I'm still Vota. I come from the southern part of the Vota region. So I come from a village known as Anyako. Anyako is like... Um, the let me say the eastern part of Keta. If you know Keta very well, so the lagoon separates Anyako from Keta. Okay. You can travel through the lagoon and then get to Keta. And it's a very small village surrounded by the lagoon. In fact, the lagoon is able to come to our homes and we have fishes coming wow. into our homes. So Man. that is the beauty of it. It's a very wow. beautiful town. You need this to happens visit in the Ghana. place. It happens in Ghana. Wow. Anyako. I love the place. I've heard of Anyako. Yeah. The only place I know in Vota is um, Agbozume. Agbozume. Yes. So when you're heading to Agbozume, you know you, you reach Abo. Yes. If you know Abo, when you get to Abo, you enter. Mm. My village is okay. on that road. Okay. I went to Agbozume to do um, a story on um, Igbe Biscuit. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I was then an intern at um, the Finder newspaper. Okay. Then also level 100 student at GIJ. Then a lady friend in class told me about this biscuit and that it, it originated from Vota region. Yeah, that was me. So I went with her. We stayed, up, I think, about two days or so. A very nice place. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to know that in your community or in your place, in your area, yeah. the fish, they come. They come. So whenever the, the waves from the lagoon, they are not very strong waves. But whenever they, they, they come, they blow, they come with the fish. And then at times the lagoon will go back and the fish will be in the sand. Wow. Yeah. Then, so you people don't really go to. to um, no, it's, it's only a few who go. I they set see. traps and then whenever they feel like they go check on the traps. Wow. Yeah. Traps for fish? For fish. You see the small, small tilapia, very small, okay. small ones. Is it the one man thousand? No, not the one man thousand. The normal tilapia, okay. but these are small ones. Okay. Like once you say have been harvested before they were allowed to grow. Yeah, it, it originates from wow. Anyaku, yeah. I would like to go there. You must. I would like to go there. You must. And so, did you pick a wife from your, your area? Not at all. Um, I think that, you know, growing up, I didn't grow up in a village. I grew up in Takradi. That was where uh, I was born, at the Ife Kwanta Hospital. So I spent about six years of my life in Takradi, went to Takwa, came to Cape Coast because my dad was working with the IRS, Internal okay. Revenue Service, mm -hmm. so you know, transfers here and there. Mm -hmm. So I've not really been in the Volta region, I have lived there okay. for long. So okay. my wife is Voltarian, but she's also not lived there. Oh, I see. Yeah. Which, which side of Volta is she from? She is from Aflau, almost entering Togo. Okay. Yeah. How did you pronounce it? Aflau. 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 Yeah. Aflau. Aflau. Yeah. Is it the same F L A O? Yes. Been... It's the same. Okay. I've been hearing. So Af so um, in Ivy, anything F becomes P H sort of. Oh, I see. Aflau. Okay. Okay. So we have a, a town that you people might call Afife. No. Yes. It's Afife. Oh, okay. That's, that's how it is. Wow. Mm -hmm. This, this, every letter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And um, how many kids? I have two boys, Alan and Sean, two lovely boys. I love them so much wow. because they bring me a lot of joy at home. Mm. Very smart kids. Wow. And they are all doing well. Wow. Do you aspire them? Do you aspire they become journalists as you are? Um, I don't want to choose for them because if you look at where my background, where I'm coming from, I was so much into music, so much into entertainment, but my dad wanted something else for me. So I'm actually a business person, but after satisfying my dad, I threw all of it away and then did my radio. Okay. And I don't want my kids to go through the same. I really want to 
find out what they love, what they are good at, and then support them. Okay. Yeah. So, so your, your dad wanted you to be? An economist, a business person, something. Wow. So you did that for, for him at a point? I did that for him. What exactly did you do? What did you study in school? Well, so I, I went to St. Augustine's College where I studied business. And from there, I went to Cape Coast Polytechnic. I also have an HND in accountancy. And right after that, I decided to do my radio. Oh, I see. And um, when, when he realized that you shifted from what he wanted you to be, what was the reaction? Yes, he's, I mean, he was never excited about it from day one because I, I told him, even entering SS, I told him that I didn't like the business. I wanted to do art. But he felt that, excuse me to say, art was for lazy people. So he wanted me to do business. And, you know, you can't always have your way with our fathers. So I decided to go ahead and do the business. And now that I'm done with the SS, I had to now do something related to it. So I went to Cape Coast Polytechnic. And then I had my HND. The day I took my certificate, I told him, this is your certificate. But the funny thing is that right after SS, I, I started understanding people in radio. Okay. So I understood uh, somebody like Nano Tujando. He is now with uh, Asasi Radio. Yes. Yes. And then we had the likes of Kojo Yangsen now with Multimedia, hmm. as well as um, the Information Minister Kojo Oponkroma. They all passed through. Oh, really? Ani Sabute. They all passed through Radio Valco on UCC campus. Okay. Yeah. So I started understanding them until Cape Coast Polytechnic decided to set up a radio station. That is Eagle FM. Okay. So I was actually part of those who started the station. I got to be the programs manager and then I also managed the station for some time before wow. I left. Really? Yeah. I see. How long did it take you from um, Cape Coast University, Balco, to where you, you became the, the manager, the, the programs manager? Well, so I did um, like a, a year and a half under study at um, Radio Valco. And when Eagle FM started, we all joined, we played the test, and since it was the SRC that started it, when that batch left, it was my batch that was now in charge. So they gave me the opportunity to be the programs manager and also head of station at some time. Wow. It was there that I met the likes of uh, Dr. Pounds as well as uh, our own Miss G. Okay. Yeah, so we all worked together. At the, at the Eagle Radio? At Eagle FM, yeah. Okay. So, um, Dr. Pounds and then uh, Miss G, what were they also doing there? Well, they all came in as people who had love for radio, interested in radio. And I feel that wherever God places you, he puts you there so you can help other people. So, whilst I was programs manager, anybody who showed interest, I was willing and ready to support and help them. Mm. So if you go on my Facebook wall, you find people coming to write stuff about how I help them so far as their media journey is concerned. But I feel that's how society is supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. That's nice of you. Mm -hmm. For Miss G, I mean, we, I work with her, so I, I know her. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Pan is one of, one of the guys I really like, and yeah. I would love to meet too. So, was he a DJ at Radio, um, Eagle Radio? Eagle FM. Eagle FM. Well, Pounce was, was not um, really a, a DJ, but he was vocal. He had that command over his language okay. and he was very enthusiastic. So I saw a young man who had a bright future. We supported him as far as knowing how to use a PC DJ and the rest was concerned. And funny enough, he even says it on radio once in a while. He says that people call me okay. and they tell me. And through that, I think he, he picked up in terms of playing music. It was not the playing music type but when it comes to presentation and it tells now even as at this point oh, yeah. it tells yeah, yeah. and I, I i think that he's really really worked hard and it's good that he finds himself where he is mm. so i mean when you when you when you see people that you've you've helped once i mean before mm -hmm. progressing how does that how does that make you feel it excites me it excites me a lot because um, if for nothing at all, one day when I'm gone, I think that somebody somewhere would also write something and say that probably this young man 
supported or helped me in this journey or to get to where I am. And I think that is more of success than maybe having a lot of riches to yourself and spending it alone. Great, 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 great. So from Eagle FM, where was the next destination? Well, so from Eagle FM, I went back to Radio Vaco, surprisingly. Oh, really? I went back to Radio but, Vaco. But you had then completed University of Cape Coast? I had completed uh, Cape Coast Polytechnic. Okay, yes. Yes. So I went back to Radio Vaco, and within six, seven months, the station was closed down. Oh. You know, it was a campus radio station. Mm. So I don't know the details, actually, but one of the things we heard was that it was not okay for uh, an institution to have two radio stations because there was ATL FM, mm. which belongs to ATL Hall, okay. and then Radio Vaco, which belonged to the Va hall, Radio okay. uh, Vaco Va Hall. Okay. So that was closed down, and in a way, we became unemployed, some of us. Oh, I see. So, so up to now, we only have ATL? We only have ATL. The Vaco is different? Vaco is gone. I see. Vaco is gone. Wow. So when you went to, when, when Vaco became different, mm -hmm. did you get the opportunity to be with um, ATL? I, 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 I was not really interested in going to ATL because I felt that campus radio stations probably did not give you that security. Mm. So I had a stint with um, a station called Ahumka FM. I've heard of them. At Elmina. Yeah. It was also very brief. Is it like, for Yes. Okay. It was also very brief for like two months. And then I moved on to, do, to play a test for now Radio Max okay. in Takradi. I played a test for like a week and then moved on finally to um, Takwa where we started Pure FM. So Pure FM in Takwa, we started Pure FM in Takwa. Wow. I also heard of Pure FM. Yeah. Yes, but I've not had opportunity to really listen to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you started Pure FM too? We started Pure FM. So you were becoming big in the, in the radio industry? Yes. And um, how long was it with P uh, Pure FM? Pure FM was for, that was between 2008 and 2010. So two years. Two years. And there were some issues that I had to leave. I left Pure FM and then quickly Space FM, also in Takwa, okay. called upon me that uh, they wanted me to be their programs manager wow. and then do some sort of rebranding okay. of the station because they saw what we did with Pure FM. And I was excited to try my hands on something like that. So what we did was to put, or put a stop to most of the programs on the station. We played music, apart from the Adum FM morning show that we were picking. Mm. It was music throughout. And then we did a rebranding and then a restructuring of all the programs of the station. Okay. And within three months, it was now the best wow. in Takwa. Wow. Yeah. I see. Uh, that's Space FM. That's Space FM. I, you know, they also, there's also um, Space FM in Sunyani. In Sunyani, yeah. And the frequency is the same. It's the same. 87.7? 87.7, yeah. Marvelous. I don't know, but I, I don't think the owners relate. They don't. They don't. Because I know for... Now, I don't know the owner of Space FM, but I, then I think it was for Ransford or someone like that. Yeah. And 87.7. .7, if you go to Sunyani, Space FM, 87.7. 7. If you go to um, Takwa, 87.7. 7. 7. Space FM. So, d did you really know that there was... I knew. Okay. I knew. We could see online mm. that there was another Space FM in Sunyani 87.7. .7. So whenever we mentioned that we were from Space FM, we quickly added Takwa so that um. we could easily differentiate. Okay. Yeah. Did you at any point think of changing that, um, what do you call it, the, the name Space FM? No. I think the owner liked it. I don't know why he went for Space FM, but it's, all, it's also kind of added to the image of the station. Because, to be honest, Space FM in Sunyani was doing great. Mm. So we, at that point, that the station had gone down and we were restructuring, felt that it is okay if people maybe mistook us for the Space FM in Sunyani. So we were actually going to ride on their back to get to where we wanted to go. So it was, it was okay for us. Okay. Yeah. So, so you were, two years you were done with um, Space FM. Where did you go? Well, I had a small stint with a Solid FM in Kumasi. Okay, Solid Ye, Kantinka. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been following, well, maybe some, someday I'll tell my story too. <laughs> I've been following radio very, very much. Okay. Right from Sunyan. So I used to know, or I, I, I knew all, almost all the stations, mm -hmm. you know. Some I, I, were, I, um, I was able to listen to, 
others um, I just had had a name and then yeah. I, I had in mind. So you were in solid. Yes. In Kumasi. It was very brief. You know, the issue was I I I don't know. I met Kentinka. You know, he was a, a producer, a music Nana producer. He was a music producer. So some of the artists that he produced, he came to Cape Coast to promote them. That was how come we met. And he told us, myself and a friend, that he was going to start a radio station. So when he started, he invited us over. Okay. But when we went, I think the people he put in the helm of affairs had their own crew. So they were the likes of CEO Sly. I don't know if you heard uh, of CEO. One yeah. of, I think Tough he was in Tetiman. Yes. He came for Tetiman. Yeah. He was like one of the best guys. I'm telling you. Where so is he now? I, I can't tell. I can't tell. So when we got there, we looked at the competition and we realized that no, Charlie Kumasi, the way it was, it was more like too big for us at that time. So when we realized that those in the helm of affairs already had their crew, we came to an agreement with Kentinka that in fact, we, it's better we, we move on. Mm. Yo. And right after that, I had a call from a big man in Ghana here. Okay. That when, the, you, when you say in Ghana, can you can you localize it, Accra, Kumase? Oh, I, I I don't know, but he he's from the Volta region. Okay. So he told us he told me about a, a plan to set up a radio station through a friend and all of that, and I was brought on board. Okay. So I was more like um, the foreman, the architecture, even the spacing of the newsroom. Wow. Everything wow. was on my labs. I put that thing together. We had the station done. So I now moved to the Volta region. In fact, I was excited because I felt that as a Voltarian, I had done a lot so far as the media was concerned outside my region. So it was time for me to give back to my people. So I gladly took the opportunity. I went there. And between 2011 and then 2013, I was in the Volta region. Wow. I managed that station. It's called Shine FM. Shine, okay. For one and a half years. It's in Akachi. Over there too, we were able to identify some young guys and then we groomed them. And they are doing well now. They are also in radio. Wow. Interesting. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed with your radio journey. And people seem to be following you to give you that recommendations here and there. Mm -hmm. What do you think was the magic? Well, I, I think that I brought something different to the radio. Mm. That is what I think, because it came to me naturally. I, I didn't struggle when it comes to my programs. And naturally, I'm a slow talker. Okay. So when I, I sit on radio, hardly would you miss something I said. Mm. And I think people also loved my style because it was different from all the others. And one of my strengths also, though I don't want to call myself a DJ, is that I can play very good music. Mm -hmm. That I know. I don't need anybody to I'll, tell I'll me. I'll even come to that. You can call it, <laughs> I'm blowing my own horn, but, but I if, like but, it. But if the trumpet, if you bought the trumpet, who should blow it for you? <laughs> <laughs> so I really leveraged on my strength. Most of my programs, I don't talk. Mm. I don't talk a lot. I allow the music to do the communication, the talking for me. And I think people loved it a lot. That was our come. But one thing I regret is the fact that I also did not stay at one place to work. Mm. I followed the calls, not money. It was not money. I followed the calls, felt that, okay, it's time to explore something new. One of the things I realized later on, and I wish that those who are into media now, the young ones coming will listen, was that the fact that I didn't stay at one place, it is very difficult to quantify what I've been able to do so far as the media is concerned. Mm -hmm. It is very, so very it's like difficult. It's they are, it is scattered. scattered. So it's difficult to mm -hmm. quantify. I'm sure by now, certain places that I've worked, you might go and mention my name and the people might say they don't know me. Except for those who probably were my generation or were really listening to radio at that particular point in time. Unlike the way we grew up, came back to know people like the Tommy and Forsens, the Gordon Avenobos and the rest. It's not like that. So I think that it is very important, mm -hmm. unless your organization wants you out, it's very important that you stay at one place 
and then put in your best. With that, over the years, it can be quantified. Mm. So yeah. what name did you use in all this? Takwa, um, Cape Coast, um, Akache, Kumase? That is also another factor. So there has been changes. I started with Radio's Finest when I was on radio in Cape Coast. And when I moved to Takwa, at first, it was the preacher's son. The preacher's son? Yes. Well, it's your father? Or? I used the preacher's son because it was through an auntie that I got to Takwa. And she was more than a preacher. She was actually a church person. So I went to MC her wedding. It was through that that the owner of PRFM, who at that time had not started the radio, identified me and told my auntie that he wants to start a radio station when he does. He wanted me to come to Takwa. Okay. So for the love that I had for that auntie and how he helped, she helped me, I told you that Radio Vaku became defunct. So it was more like I was out of job mm. and all of that. But for that man to remember and prompt my auntie to give me a call to go to Takwa, I think I, I, I owed it to her. Mm. So I decided to go with that name the preacher's son. All along, I was also mentioning my full name okay. because I didn't want it to, to get lost because that is my real identity. I was also mentioning my full name. And after some time, when I went to Space FM, I decided to change from the preacher's son because I lost that auntie who was so dear to me oh. in Takwa. I, I didn't want that memory, that pain to be with me. So I started using Supremo. Okay. And at some point, many were saying that, oh, you, when it comes to radio, you are like a doctor. Okay. So that is how come I'm Dr. Supremo. Okay. And since 2011, I've been Dr. Supremo till now. Wow. Yeah. Great, 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 great. So after Akachi, Radio Shine. Yeah. Or oh, is it Shine FM? Shine FM. Shine FM. Yeah. You moved to? I came to Accra. Okay. When I came to Accra, I, a lot happened in Akachi, so I, I told myself I don't want to do radio again. Oh. It's enough. I was tired. What happened? It was nine years of radio. You know, um, to be honest, some people do not tell businessmen who want to venture into media the truth. Mm. The media space is now choked. To get adverts is a difficult thing. Those in the helm of affairs will tell you how they are struggling. Now, even with the emergence of technology, digital media, social media, and the likes, it's very difficult. Mm. So, taking up the challenge to move to a place like Akachi in the Volta region, I tell you that the biggest advert you would get would pay not more than 300 Ghana. Wow. So, for a month. Wallahi. So, ask yourself, how many of the 300 Ghana can you get for you to be able to pay your light bill and the rest? So it was my connections in radio that helped me survive. Mm. My connections with people, with the advertising agencies, MTN and co, that supported me on that stint. And I am always grateful to them. But it didn't end well. Mm. I came back very hurt wow. and decided to stay somewhere. That did not even do radio again? Not to do radio again. So when you came back to Accra, did you pick your h &D certificate to no? use it? No. What were you doing? I, I, I felt that that was more like um, the wilderness for me. And I say that whenever you are in the wilderness, that's the time you need to prepare for the promised land. Wow. You remember the Israelites when they were in captivity? I'm sure when they were there, they thought that that was the end for them. But there was still the promised land. Mm. So whenever you are in the wilderness, it looks like nothing is happening. No one is coming to your aid. You need to prepare yourself for the bigger thing ahead. So I was reflecting on the things I've done. And I told myself, if I get the opportunity to do something again, mm. maybe I wouldn't have to repeat the mistakes I repeated, such as moving quickly from one place to the other. So one day I had a call from Tommy Anamforsen. I spoke with him. He was asking why, what I was doing now. And I told him that, well, this, this, this is what happened and I decided not to do radio again. He said, no, I can't do that. Okay. So another time he gave me a call and then said, I can go to Metro TV. Okay. Go to the newsroom. I was a little bit reluctant because um, 
I was not a news person. Though I've managed radio stations, so in my role as programs manager, I came into contact with head of news. I understand what they do, but I'm not a news person. So what am I really going to do at Metro TV, their newsroom? But I said, fine, maybe that is a breakthrough for me. So in 2014, 2014 August, mm. I walked into the newsroom of Metro TV. That's how come I started TV as okay. a news person. Wow. And I was there till the middle of 2015. One day I saw that, okay, Media General TV3 wanted to do audition. Then I came. I came to speak to TAP, Tomatoes Thomas at the yeah. Purple. He said I can try and see. I tried, it didn't work. So it was audition for what? Reporters or news readers or? I think it was news readers. Okay. Yes. But you had not done news reading before. See me. <laughs> <laughs> see me. And, and, and I gave it a shot. It right. didn't work. I see. Uh, that time it was Gabi and TB and another person. I think I could rough. Okay. They were on the panel. It didn't work. So later I came to see Tap, took me to Auntie B. I told her that I really want to be part of the team. Okay. He said, okay, uh, I can start attachment. Mm. Then I said, wow, I love it. I'll grab it. I see. So you went to Metro TV. Um, Mr. Forsen recommended. Yeah. You went there and um, you left. I left. But you came here for, you came to TV3 or Media General for attachment. Attachment. And you don't think it was belittling my brother i have <laughs> learned <laughs> i have learned a lot in life i see so if you look at my posture and the way i do things i think that god takes us through certain processes to humble us to let us know that it is not where you are in life but it is how he god is carrying you through life so I, I, I prayed about it and I told God that maybe this is a new phase of my life. And at that time too, I wanted to really settle down. Mm. And in terms of work? In terms of marry. Okay. Because you, I was not going younger. You were not married then? No, I was not. Okay. But, but I, was, you were, I was dating. Her? My wife, yeah. You were dating her? Yeah. Okay. While I was at Metro, I was with her. Okay. okay. What, yeah. what, what does she do? Or you don't want to? She, um, she's actually in the health field okay. but she do more of administrative than the health proper okay yeah okay don't you think um well i should i should ask this before was she supporting you in any way while you were facing the challenge the akachi challenges and you moved to the uh, metro tv no while i was in akachi i didn't know her okay it was when i came back to metro tv to metro tv so metro tv that star that stardom at metro tv no it, it was not the stardom Are you sure? no it was not <laughs> it was not the stardom because ah. seriously i she knew me but did not know what i was doing okay until i told her okay yeah so i knew her we were in the same church mm. so she knew me we, we were like friends i didn't really know it was going to be her we were like friends before it happened okay yeah i wanted to know whether she was giving it something small and that probably, I mean, became the well, reason why you, you, no, you felt comfortable no, to leave no, Metro TV. No, she, she, I wouldn't say she was giving me something small, but she was a type, she's an independent woman. Mm. She doesn't depend on a man. So she understood the fact that at that time, the circumstances were kind of difficult for me. So she wouldn't, naturally, she would not ask you for anything. If she can afford it, she would not ask you. That's her. So we went for like a year. Okay. And she never asked for anything. Wow. And it clicked that oh, no. What's her name? Let's give her a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> She's Abna. I call her Abby. Abna. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Salom. Mrs. Big shout out to you. Mrs. Abena. Yeah. yeah. A big shout out to you. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So um, I think she was part of the motivation that no matter how it is, I knew I could excel if I had the opportunity mm. to come to TV3. Okay. So I didn't want to let that chance pass by. Mm. I took it. So you became an intern? An intern. In the newsroom? In the newsroom. The same newsroom? The same The newsroom. one you ran away from at Metro TV? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting, my brother. So <laughs> you, started, you became a reporter? Yeah, a reporter. Okay. 
I, okay, so when I joined Met, uh, Media General in 2016, um, I think I saw you were reporting on politics, political reporter, and then, then court. court. Yes. Was it, was it that role you started as an intern? Yes, yeah, so when I came in, my first assignment was to go out with um, Komla Kluche. Okay. We went to court. Okay. And Tab told me that he used to be a court correspondent. Okay. And looking at me, Mm. And the way I do things, mm. he thinks that I'll be okay with a court. Okay. So I went the first time, I was like lost. I see. Another time I went, <laughs> they were delivering a judgment. Charlie, the, the lawyer, the judge, they were talking. The judge spoke for a long time. And I was wondering, so what is the news and what this man is saying? Well, like. So after the proceedings, I spoke to the guys, I mean, the judicial press call, they've been very supportive. I spoke to them that, hey, I'm new. I'm an intern, this, this, this. So, and they told me that, okay, where the judge got to and said by court is really the judgment. Mm. So all that he read initially was mm. like the, the processes or the length that the case has traveled. So everything that has been said, whether it was witnesses that were called, whatever, he had to kind of recount and let you know that this is what has happened. That is why the court has arrived at this particular judgment. Okay. So I got it. And after some time, I think I was okay. Mm. I was okay with it. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And so um, you, I think now you do more of court than, than the political reporting. I do more of production now. Production, yes, I, yes. Instead of even the reporting. The reporting, yeah. So one of the things I told myself was that I don't want to be a reporter so that one day, if they are fed up with reporters and they're asking them to go, mm. they will say that I should go. Okay. So there are a number of things that I did. I learned how to edit my own stories. Mm. I pushed that I want to do my own voiceovers. Okay. I also learned from the producers, Bosolo, uh, Isaac Ameko, all the producers in the newsroom, I really sat by them anytime they are producing. At times it's news I turn and I say that, oh, I don't want to go home. Mm. I want to stay with you so you take me through. Mm. So, so for someone watching who doesn't know about media, you want to say you are producing the news, briefly explain for us. Yeah, so production is like uh, more like you are pitching something, an idea. So let's say today, for instance, is a budget. That is the biggest thing today. You've listened to the budget. What are the things that were mentioned? We look at it. Are there things that affect a particular section of the, of the country? Is it the health workers? Is it big? Is it national in nature? You look at all those things, you pick the angles, and then you decide that, okay, we are going to treat this particular thing that was said in the budget. Who and who do we need? Do we need to do an education? Do we need to interrogate? Then you bring in the expert. So you book your guest who you want to maybe make input. You look at their weight. So you book them if they agree to speak, whether Skype, Zoom, now we have Zoom and all of that, phone, whatever. If they want to come in studio, you book them and then you put the rundown together. If you need to go get some bites, you put everything together and then it is prepared. That is where you see the anchor come sit and then they present the news, they ask questions, we call this one, we do that. Mm. So it is the producer's work to put the bulletin together. together. Yeah. Okay. So you, you also be behind the scene doing the if the person you are calling the person on the phone, you be, yeah. you be behind the scene to call the person. To call, call the that. person. Okay. I think that, that is that is clear. And so are you do you do you enjoy the producer role than the reporter to the reporter to the reporting? I enjoy both because you know, for you to be a good producer. You need to have a grasp of the issues on the ground. Mm. So there are times, whilst you keep covering certain issues, you become used to them. You and I will agree that there are producers who can write a story without being at the scene. For instance, there's a fire outbreak. Now, if there's a fire outbreak and they ask me to go, I know what to look out yeah. for. I can even write a story before, before I get go. there. Yeah. That's how it works. It comes with experience. Yeah. So. At this point, I enjoy both. In order for me to be a good producer, mm. it is necessary that I also have a feel or a taste of what is happening on the ground. Mm. So I, I enjoy both. Bro. Okay. So did you at any point in your educational career do um, journalism? I didn't. I'm not doing it. 
Uh -huh. so, at GIJ. So, so you you became a reporter. You wrote stories. You are now producing. Um, you learned everything on the job. How difficult was that? It was so difficult. One of the things that I keep telling myself is that if you want to do something and you put your mind to it, nothing is going to stop you. Mm. So you might find me sitting behind a computer. You think that all I'm doing is working or writing a story. I actually go through some of the stories that have been written in the day. So I look out for people who are kind of recommended or mentioned for praise that, oh, this your story was good. I quickly open up those stories. I read them. And I try to put myself on the ground, on the field. That so if this person went on the field and saw this and that, how come the person wrote the story this way? There are times I even keep the original copy. Like I try to get the copy before the producer edits. Okay. So I look at the difference, what the person wrote, and then what, what the producer, the final taken work out. taken mm -hmm. out. And that is how come I, I became good or better at writing stories. Mm -hmm. I read a lot of newspapers. Anything and everything I see, I try to read. Okay. And in my reading, I look at how they've put the words together. Mm. How, for instance, an intro has been written. So the next time I'm writing a story, quickly it comes to mind that, oh, you saw this intro somewhere. Instead of maybe this coming first, they put this first. So I always have a variety of ways of writing my intros yeah. and things. And I'm sure... Um if you had not mentioned that you've not attended a journalism school before, people wouldn't have known. So why are you attending journalism school now? Yes, yeah, so the journalism school that I'm attending, I'm actually doing communication. I think that it's going to help me um, in the future. Mm. That's what I think. You want, you want the, are, you, are you eyeing a big position somewhere? No. Anything, can, anything can happen. Uh, Everything today is communication. Mm. Even if I start my own business now, mm. I would need to communicate with my, my clients. Do you aspire to be information minister? You please go to open Kroma someday. That is, if it is the will of God. Do you aspire to be? For aspiration, I don't have that aspiration. But anything can happen. I see. Because if you ask me <laughs> this question like 10 years ago, whether I want to be a news person, I probably wouldn't have known. Mm. But I'm a news person now. Mm. So that's how it works. God always has a plan. Yours is to walk within that plan. Great, yeah. great. I know on Onya FM and even 3 FM, you, 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 you do the um, countdown. The 3 FM the 3 countdown. 3 FM countdown. On Saturdays. On Saturdays. Then you do... Um, Chibum special. Chibum special on Saturdays to on Onya FM. Onya. Let's, take a, let's talk about the, the countdown. How do you do it? How do you know that this, this week, um, let's say, Floating Stone song became first, or Sakwadia's song was first, and Mr. K Day was third? How do you do it? Yes, so um, what we do is that our countdown is cumulative. Cumulative meaning we award points to songs based on how they are performing. We look at whether you are enjoying airplay so far as radio and TV is concerned. We have people in the Western region, Ashanti, who support us with what they are experiencing there in terms of airplay. We also monitor the YouTube handles of the biggest artists in Ghana. We also monitor their Twitter handles, their Instagram. We want to see when they release songs, how do people respond to the songs? Okay. If a song is able to hit like uh, 45K in a day, 45K views in a day, you cannot tell me it's not a good song. Mm. So it means that once you have hit that, we need to look at subsequent weeks, whether the song will start enjoying airplay on TV and radio. We also have our DJs here. We speak to them, we pick their thoughts. We put all of these together and then we rank them based on the points that they've made. I see. T today is Friday. Today is Friday. Tomorrow, Saturday, God willing, there will be a calm down. Yes, production is already ongoing. It's already, already, so when, when does the production come to an end for the, for the week? Latest 10 p.m. Friday, we are done. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so for now, we can't we can know who is number one tomorrow. We already know. Okay. Because it's cumulative. We already know whichever song that is number three, number four, as well as number two. If they are not able to accumulate more points to overthrow number one, that means that last week's number one will still be number one oh, this I week. See. That's how it works. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. 
and then the um, the, the Chibom special. Chibom special. What, what, tell us what what do you do on Chibom special on Unia FM 95.1. So Chibom special, like I told you, one of my strengths is music play. It's more of um, a music show. I play a lot of music and just to help people relax. It's a weekend. Some have gone for funerals. Some are just home relaxing. Some have gone for parties and the rest. So we help to spice up your weekend. So between three and six, we play music with a little bit of talk. And then we also allow listeners to reach out to their, I don't know if I should say friends, because it's Onuya FM. So we give you the chance to reach out to Unyanum. That's how we do it. So when you call, when I say Unya, then you say Minyanum. Okay. Then you greet three of your friends. Mm. So that's how it is. That's what basically that's what we do. Okay. And we play strictly Ghanaian music. Okay. We don't play Niger, whatever, foreign, no. It's strictly Ghana music. Okay. And Chibum? Yes. Chibum is, is a concept. For instance, if you go to the bread seller, you want to buy eggs, some will say they want four. They should fry together. That is the Chibum. Some people want come beef in it. Some want onions. Uh, some want kekimba. Mm. Whatever. Some even want soy sauce in the in the in the egg, right? The bread too. Some want it toasted and all of mm. that. So because it is a variety of Ghanaian music that we are playing, we came out with that concept, that chibum, so that it is not restricted. That it is a gospel program, so strictly gospel. No, we can play Ghanaian gospel. We can now play mm -hmm. high life, hip life. Depending on what the person requests? Not depending on what you request. Okay. It is my arrangement. Okay. But I also have the listeners at the back of my mind whilst I prepare my playlist. Mm. Let me tease this out from you as a DJ. Mm -hmm. So when you are coming to play the songs, how do you know that um, taking Sakodi, taking flow, taking Shata, taking this and that will, will, will let the people stay? Do you at times go to the bars, listen to what people are listening there? What, what do you do? What, how, how do you do it? Yeah, so naturally, because I've done it over the years, when I hear a good song, I hear. I mean, listening to the song, I can tell the song will do well. Okay. So, one of the things I try to do is to play the people's favorite. Okay. But not be repetitive. Mm. So you might find me playing a song this week, next week, I try not to go there even if it is very big so that listeners can always have a variety mm. but what I've also done is um, I play around genres of music so I do more of high life I do the very old ones I do the contemporary and I fix it with the Afro fusion the latest ones they are doing now so it is a blend of Ghanaian music. Okay. That's what I do. Mm. Who's your favorite um, Ghanaian musician? Either gospel or um, the other? Favorite Ghanaian musician for gospel, Joe Metal, any day. Mm. I would want to listen to Joe Metal because um, when I wake up, one of the things I love to do is to listen to gospel music. Okay. Whichever form, whether it is worship, slow, fast. Once I'm up, I need to give thanks to God. I have life. It means that there's always the opportunity to be better. And if you're talking about secular, I would go for a certain stone boy. I'm saying a certain stone boy because um, throughout my media journey, I think I have seen him grow. Okay. If I started radio in 2004, that should tell you that I saw stone boy grow. Mm. And for him to get to this point, irrespective of the difficulties, the challenges, the, the stumbling blocks and the hindrances, his life tells me that we can get there if we really want to, if we put our minds to it. So that is why I will go for a certain stone boy. Mm. It's not really about the fact that maybe I love dancehall music mm. and he's a dancehall artist, no. I don't listen to music because of the rhythm. I listen to what is in it. Mm. So I, I, I listen to a particular song because of the information or the message it is carrying. It can be about life, it can be about love, it can be about um, 
another person's struggles. It can be about anything. But music with swear words, you don't find me playing on radio. No, I don't. Okay. It's been nice talking to you, Dr. Supremo. It's been nice. Your last word to your, your audience, your fans, and um, to the up and coming, those who want to do media. Yes, I want them to take a cue. Life is not a bed of roses, like I mentioned, that from a general manager of a radio station to an intern, back to where I am now, you need to put aside your pride and then believe also in God. He gives life. Once he's given you life, whatever you dream of doing, keep at it. Never lose hope. Do not say that maybe you, are, you have a master's or you have a degree because of that a particular job is not befitting for you. No, you need to start from somewhere. You could even start as a pupil teacher, but let your eye be on your dream. Where you are starting does not matter. The starting point does not matter. It is the end that matters. So if you are done with GIJ, whatever school you went to, no media house is picking you. You can decide to do freelance, that you go cover stories, do very good stories, and give to the media houses. Forget about whether they decide to pay or not pay. Do it for them. Just make sure that you find a way that they will mention your name, that maybe this is a report by so-so and so. If you can bag in on that, put your name out there, keep at it, you will definitely get there. Wow. Wow. I mean, I think th this is loaded. And um, I'm, I'm happy this conversation I mean, came off. Yes, bro. I'm so much grateful that you had time to sit so we talk. Um, I pray that God uplifts you higher than, I mean, being a radio manager. Amen. Yes, and then Amen. give you all that your heart desires. Amen. I'm grateful for coming on this show, to, um, Mr. Do Dr. Supremo. Yes, boss. Yeah. Bras, <laughs> well, I also want to say this, that if you've not subscribed to his channel, Inuaba, yes. right, you need to do so, so that any time a video is posted, you are notified and you'll be among the first to watch. And I tell you, you will never regret you did. Do so now. God bless you. Right, so we've come to an end of another exciting interview. I spoke with Dr. Supremo, and I think you've taken something out of that. My name is Solomon Mensa. I was here with two cameramen, Jones and Benjamin Tenkran. Please subscribe to the channel, as Dr. Supremo said, so that you get notified of our future videos. I'm grateful for having time to watch. Bye-bye.